Wonderful honor to receive this award, especially in the company of such distinguished honorees. I will mention where is Renee, or he out in the audience here. Okay, Renee. Renee is a fabulous teacher in our district, and when he emailed me very casually to say that I was going to, um, that I had been nominated for this award, I pictured in my mind the cafeteria at one of our local high schools <laughs> with some of the moms and dads that I work so closely with and some tamales and some, you know, a few little things and then maybe getting a certificate that someone had written. So thank you, Renee, for um, this wonderful honor and privilege, but I've never had the audacity to think that I would follow the wonderful Sal Castro, who, by the way, my mom still calls Jovencito, when she spoke about him. When I was asked um, to accept this award, I was so delighted. And many people don't know, although I um, did go to four community colleges, unfortunately, like many of our scholarship recipients in the audience, I didn't have the honor of completing high school and receiving my A through G. And um, as my husband and I were very quite young, going through uh, as a full-time student and a full-time worker took me a little bit more time. But um, I would attribute everything I've been able to do in service of the students of Garden Grove Unified School District to my parents, my mom, Ada. Um, many of you, if you've been back in the 80s and 90s at Chicano Studies at UCLA, was the secretary for David Hayes Bautista for about 17 years. Many people remember Ada, and everywhere I go, I said, you're Ada's daughter. Um, my mom, Ada, was the eighth of nine children. I grew up in Ciudad Juarez, came here when she was in her late 20s. And her father, Santiago Troncoso, published the first daily newspaper, Dia, in 1926. And he was, I actually have in my office, in Garden Grove Unified, a newspaper article about him. He was actually put in jail several dozen times just simply for publishing a newspaper at the time, during the time of the Civil War. So I really stand here before you today as a testament to my parents who uh, came with my mother coming to the United States, meeting my father, raising uh, six children, of whom I'm the fifth, in uh, the South Los Angeles, Crenshaw area. And um, my daily work today as a servant leader within our district is working with our 18 secondary schools, serving our predominantly Latino immigrant community, our bright, articulate, promising students, and their loving parents, primarily recent immigrants to the country from Mexico and, and some from Vietnam as well, and those parents who don't know how to navigate the system, as I didn't know, but as my children and, and our children will know, and providing that support and structure for them to, to dream of the possibilities that, um, that are before them. Those first generation students, as I once was, pursuing college dreams, not just for themselves, but hearing the voices as the lovely young lady that's sitting at our table, a recent graduate from Segerstrom High School in Santana, talking about how they're going to give back to the community. Not just about what I'm gonna have in the future, not just about my job, but what I can do to go back to the community and pay it back. I'm especially encouraged to be here this evening and so honored to be receiving this award in having the opportunity to see all of the faces of our enthusiastic scholarship recipients. And I remember all too well the challenges of going back after having um, prematurely finished high school with my um, California proficiency test and um, the, the fear of going to community college, would I be good enough? Um, what would the future lay before me as I transferred over to Cal State Long Beach and going into the Cal State system and thinking, I don't know if I can do this. Moving forward, being talked into by a fellow teacher into getting my master's degree when I first stepped onto USC campus and looking at the buildings and thinking, okay, I'm way over my head. And then being talked into um, a doctorate degree by a professor as I was on the road towards administration. But one of the common themes that we've heard this evening from all of the recipients is the mentoring that we've received um, from those who have come before us and paying tribute to Sal and so many others who have come before us that have led the way that have made it easier for us. What I'd like to encourage all of the scholarship recipients this evening is as you're sitting here this evening, fast forward 10, 15, 20 years and think about the ways in which you will extend that help, that assistance, and that support to other students who will be as you are now. So with that being said, I wanted to extend my warmest congratulations 
and the promise to all of the scholarship recipients that you too, soon, someday, will be in the position to be at a podium such as this, speaking to folks about the work that you love and the passion that you have for serving your community and being able to support other students to continue that chain of um, support and community service. Thank you. Thank you.